Hello everybody and welcome to History episode 8. We are now on episode 8, we're exciting, very nearly on episode 10, we're nearly 10, minutes, 10 episodes in. If you missed my last video that I just uploaded because I was poorly last week, then please go back and watch uh, Queen Isabella, the she-wolf. But if you've seen that and you're ready for your next instalment of history, then today um, we are going to be talking about Elizabeth Bathory, otherwise known as the Blood Countess. Bit of a strange one to do, I know, probably more suitable for Halloween, but I just felt like doing it. I wanted to have a wide contrast of women um, for the three episodes that I'm filming today. So um, I've done Isabella and... Now I'm going to do Elizabeth Bathory and the next one, well you'll have to tune into the next one to find out who it is, but it's they're three very very different women and uh, all very cool to talk about. I'm going to have to go and get a drink um, before I die. I'm back. Um, hydrated and I got all my hair off my face because I was doing my nut in. I washed it yesterday and it's still wet it's the perks of having long thick hair anyway today we are going to talk about elizabeth bathory the blood countess she was born at Elizabeth bathory on august the 7th 1560 in hungary she learned to speak hungarian slovak greek and german when she was a child she had severe health problems as a child um, her parents being first cousins probably contributed somewhat to that and she was epileptic and she used to suffer from severe seizures in her childhood. She regularly witnessed violence and punishments that were given out to um, servants as a child and at age 10 she became engaged to a Hungarian count called Ferenc Nadaski. So sorry I'm pronouncing that wrong. I'm gonna upset everybody each week with my <laughs> with my pronunciation of things um, and she moved in with him and her mother-in-law as was customary to do so at that time after this um, when she had moved in with Ferenc it was uh, rumoured she had an affair with a peasant boy and became pregnant and gave the child away uh, hubby had the man castrated and thrown to a pack of wild dogs nice um, they married on may the 8th 1574 four and a half thousand people attended their wedding uh, it was a three-day event uh, and her husband gifted her castle chastitska in, in modern day slovakia then hungary modern day slovakia uh, surrounded by farmland um the two newlyweds don't really see very much of each other. Her husband is off fighting the Ottomans and earning himself the title of the Black Knight of Hungary, which is a pretty, pretty cool title. Um, so the Turks had invaded Hungary in 1591 and uh, it's called the Long War and it went on until 1606. So this is kind of the backdrop of what's happening at that time. Um, as I say, the two didn't really spend very much time together, but when they did, it was said that they bonded over their love of violence and enjoyed torturing their serving girls together. Folle adieu, indeed. Um, where are we? He, so he taught her innovative torture techniques and brought her presents such as personalised torture devices, like a glove, a metal glove with claws on, so that she could scratch the faces of her serving girls. Lovely little gifts from, uh, from your husband there. In 1601, Anna, I'm going to say this wrong again, Davoilia, Davoilia, Anna, <laughs> joined the household and it was rumoured she was a witch. Uh, Elizabeth became more sadistic under Anna and Anna taught her 
to uh, kill uh, as, instead of just to torture, to kill as well. And under Anna, Elizabeth was responsible for the death of several of her servants. Peasants were disposable to her. She got her serving girls from uh, peasant stock. Um, parents would sell their children to uh, nobility uh, in servitude um, because they needed the money and that's that's where large amounts of their, their servant girls came from so they were disposable to her but rumours very quickly spread around the surrounding villages as local pastors kept getting called up to the castle to perform funerals for serving girls who were dying of cholera um, so for and Elizabeth had five children. The youngest was born in 1598. In 1604, Ferencz died of an illness causing paralysis to the legs. Elizabeth at this time was 44 years old. His death caused her to become even more sadistic. With almost 400 serving girls, Elizabeth had no shortage of victims, but they needed replacing. So she began recruiting girls from nearby villages and when she'd have her fill of torturing them, they'd be flung over the castle walls and left to be eaten by wolves. Elizabeth built up a loyal team of sycophants who were ready to do her bidding. They facilitated her dark desires. Anna, of course, was the ringleader. Iona Jo, um, who was the children's nanny. Uh, a friend called Dorka. And a washerwoman called Catelyn. There was also a boy called Fitzgo, and he was the youngest. He was a teenage boy. Um, a serving girl needed only to make the slightest mistake, such as missing a stitch, and Elizabeth would fix her with an evil stare and slap her around. Creative punishments were created for all kinds of misdemeanours. So, for the example I gave before of missing a stitch, she used to put needles in the tips of their fingernails. Elizabeth reveled in psychological torment and was often fond of using her purpose-built torture chamber. She was also fond, um, no, she was, yeah, fond of using her purpose-built torture chamber. <laughs> if you got away with a couple of missing digits covered in cuts and bruises, uh, you were lucky. You were one of the lucky ones. Some girls were forced to commit cannibalism. One of the lasting myths about Elizabeth Bathory is that she would bathe in the blood of virgins to um, prolong her youthful appearance and, and try it. Like oil of ole, she would bathe in virgins' blood, um, and that's almost certainly untrue. Unfortunately, that's what she's famous for, that's what she's gone down in history for, but it is almost certainly untrue. There are no contemporary witness accounts of that happening at all. That seems to be a later addition to Elizabeth's story. Um, but rumours were spreading like wildfire even then and in 1609 rumours were absolutely rife. Some poor people were even selling their children to her for vast amounts of money as a serving girl and if they were to disappear then oh well. They needed the money that badly. Um, they were running out of places to bury the bodies and they began feeding them to dogs. In 1609, Anna died of a stroke. Um, Elizabeth's debts began to spiral. Her kids had all grown up and left home, probably for the best. And she became lonely and depressed. So she decided she needed a better class of victim. Her lady steward, Ertzi Majorova, Majorova, again thought to be a witch, uh, convinced her that killing noble girls would right her financial situation. It would, it would turn her turn her finances upside down for the better so elizabeth opened a finishing school for noble girls whose parents paid vast sums for them to to attend unlike peasant parents uh, noble parents want answers when their children disappear she tried to concoct this story to throw them off the scent. She told them that one of the girls had gone crazy and killed all the others and then committed suicide, but nobody believed her. And eventually a couple of the nobles got together and they went to the King of Hungary, Matthias II, who agreed to investigate. And he appointed a man called Thurzo to go and do so. Thurzo had actually been friends with Elizabeth's husband before. And on um, 
Ferenc's deathbed, he had promised to look after Elizabeth. Um, but his, so he was in a bit of a, a difficult situation. But his his loyalty to the king was obviously much greater than um, than this than his friend because he did investigate properly and thoroughly. Um, witnesses were interviewed and testimony began to stack up of blood drenched walls and floors and blood curdling screams. She says as her voice disappears. <clears throat> I just leave you with that mental picture. Um, however, none of the people that had um, testified had directly witnessed the torture firsthand, so Thurzo needed more information to go on. Um, in December of 1610, the king and Thurzo invited themselves to Bathory Castle to die. When they became unwell after eating dessert, they thought they'd been poisoned and quickly scarpered, but they returned on New Year's Eve of 1610 with an army to arrest Elizabeth. Upon entering, they found the mutilated bodies of three girls just tucked inside the front door. The sounds of screaming led them down to the torture chamber where her team were hard at work. She blamed everything on her servants. She blamed everything on, the, on her team of friends that were helping her. 306 people testified against her, including her murder crew who turned against her as she had against them. The total reported murder count varied between 80 and 360. In January 1611, her accomplices were put on trial. Iona, Dorka and Fitzgo were sentenced to death. But uh, first their fingers were torn out with iron tongs. Probably quite gentle compared to what they'd inflicted upon others. Catalin was sentenced to life in prison for being the soft one. Um, she'd quite often try and feed people and, and sort of tend to their wounds and look after them when no one else was looking. Um, she wasn't very good at being in the murder squad. She was the, the kind one. Um, Elizabeth Bathory was never put on trial. <clears throat> she was just imprisoned in one of the dungeons in her own castle. Uh, it was a windowless room uh, with no light. And her only visitors were priests. At this point, uh, she's insane, mad with rage, totally unrepentant and still blaming her murder crew for everything. On August the 21st, 1614, Elizabeth complained of having cold hands. She lay down to sleep and never woke up. She was buried in the cemetery at Chastitska. Again, the same as Arthury Castle. Um, but local uproar from the peasantry saw her exhumed and taken to the Bathory family crypt. However, when the crypt was opened in 1995, Elizabeth was nowhere to be seen. And that's where we get the weird vampire stories. So, again, fun facts. I think I'm going to do this at the end of every episode, actually. Fun facts. Um, Countess Bathory has been labelled by Guinness World Records as the most prolific female murderer. Not sure whether that's a title I proud but there we go uh the film the countess was released in 2009 about her her story was revamped under the victorians good old victorians i find myself saying this a lot the victorians found out about it and and that's why it's in our in our consciousness like um Boudicca. <laughs> like Boudicca, we have the victorians to thank for, for Boudicca's story um, the story was revamped under the Victorians in 1817 when the witness accounts were published for the first time. Leopold von Sacker Massoch, whose name inspired the term masochism, was inspired by Bathory to write his 1874 novella called Eternal Youth. Dacre, D A C R E, Dacre, Dacre, Dacre Stoker, who is uh, Bram Stoker's grand nephew, wrote Dracula the Undead where Bathory is Count Dracula's cousin and she's over in London murdering women under the guise of Jack the Ripper. 
all very strange. I wrote my dissertation at university on the Jack the Ripper murders, so I'm not even going to go down that route. Um, no. Uh, she's now an influence for modern vampire literature and films. She even featured in an episode of Buffy the Vampire Slayer. I don't know if any of you guys remember that one. She's inspired books, TV, music, plays, comics, manga, poems, video games, radio shows, and even her own line of toys. And finally, the most recent depiction that I have seen of her is Lady Gaga's character, the Countess, in American Horror Story, which is based on her. So there we go. Uh, a fascinating lady. Not the nicest of women, but one whose story deserves to be told, I think. Um... Yeah, let me know. Let me know what you think. As always, let me know who you would like me to do an episode on. And um, I will see you next week for another episode of History. Episode 9. Give me a like, give me a subscribe. All that good stuff. And I will see you on Friday.